What's going on guys? Welcome back to another MD Fish Tanks build video. I'm MD. Today we're going to be making a really simple shrimp tank. One that you guys can do as well, but I do think it looks really, really good. It's low maintenance and it allows you to see all the shrimp. That's the most important thing because currently I've got a tank set up that's breeding shrimp fast, but I can't tell the numbers because it's quite complicated. Let me show you. So this is my second studio, which is currently home to, well, a shrimp rack and fish tank rack <laughs> and an assortment of a ton of other tanks all of these are um, on a full sort of tour of both my studios this is studio one <laughs> number two is where we just were I'll leave a link up the top there to a full tour of the whole lot. But anyway, this is the tank I'm interested in. Just look at this lot. There are shrimp everywhere. There's blues, there's blacks, there's reds. In fact, I should have put some food in, shouldn't I? Because they all come much further forward when I do that. I look up here, there, there's shrimp everywhere. I kind of feel like they've outgrown this space. There's way more than we're actually seeing as well. So the idea is I want to nab some of the, or take out, <laughs> not now i want to take out some of the adults and put them into a new setup so it, i can you know restart the population in another tank it makes it safer as well because if for any reason you get like a tank crash you've actually got like a backup this tank here has got um crystal reds there's a couple you can see there just picking at something this one has got the orange sun kissy ones i'm, I'm not even completely sure let me step back so you can sort of see everything that needs a trim <laughs> grows so fast that pearl weed as a lot of you know this one has got uh, crystal blacks in there's one at the front there and the rest are hiding <laughs> yeah and then down the bottom here uh we've got uh, i just set this one up actually if, uh, about a week ago now and this has got crystal reds as well ah there we go Look, there's a few on the stick in the middle there just pecking away so at the moment, most of these tanks are, well, all of the shrimp tanks are actually cubes, but for the new tank, I'm not using a cube. So we've actually got a cuboid here that I want to use to build this one out, and it's got a black background on it from a previous setup. So that's just painted on. I did it a while ago, hang on. There you go, you can clearly see the amazing job I've done there. It's just normal masonry paint, so it's not even for glass, but you put enough on, it dries, it's all good. It does, ah, not with that, it does scratch off, but all I need is, hang on, my trusty little thingy of stuff and things. Yeah, this is what I need. Take that bit off, and then we've basically got a razor blade. You can see I've already used it for scraping off paint before. But yeah, you just put it on, and nothing happens. Let me put this camera down. <laughs> now nah, stop that. This is completely blunt. I need a new one. <laughs> There we go, a nice glass box again, but we do need some sort of background on it, don't we? I'm gonna go for a clear one, or not clear, but you know, like frosted, that kind of thing. looking really fresh and I like the look but obviously we're gonna need a light on that and for that I've got this really good looking budget LED it packs some power to be fair for such a nano light uh, but it doesn't cost a fortune I'll leave a link to something similar or the exact one if you're in the UK of there's some US links I've seen of something similar that I think is good so I'll leave that as well yeah there we go that looks tidy let me switch it on Yeah. 
right, we're looking all sweet and ready to go. First of all, we need to add in some substrate. So these shrimp are neocaridina and they do best with a pH of seven plus. My tap water seven, so using an inert substrate, i.e. just plain sand, not an aquasol or anything like that, is probably the reason why these are doing so well. So I'm gonna stick with that theme for the new tank. So here we have an inert substrate. It's basically tiny pieces of crushed lava rock which means it won't alter our pH at all and actually really, really good for beneficial bacteria to colonize. So all pluses, <laughs> in it goes. So for this tank, I'm not gonna be planting into the substrate, so I've only got that sort of thin little layer. Obviously that wouldn't hold plants down, but that's not what we're going for. I'm going for a centerpiece, and then the shrimp can be all around it. I'll be able to see them all, oh, it should look really good. So I've got quite a collection of wood to put in. I want one main centerpiece with lots of bits on it then. I think that'll look so cool. And I've got just a piece of wood in mind in my wood store, follow me. And this here is the piece that I'm thinking of. I quite recently took it out of a tank because it wasn't even being seen in the one that it was in. And I remember looking at it thinking, oh, that looks really nice. And yeah, so it should stay sunk straight away as well. I don't have to, you know, boil it or anything. I never boil any wood. I mean, I don't know why people do. Ah, oh, that's why they do it, to release the tannings and get it to sing. I just put it in a bucket for a while. But yeah, this was perfect. So I think even that looks amazing, but obviously we can't just leave it like that. But I don't want to go over the top here with the planting. It's not even planting, is it? I'm just going to be putting stuff on this particular piece of wood. Um, maybe I'll add some more afterwards, but initially let's just add like some really, really cool bits of moss, maybe some baby java ferns, some stuff like that. I'm not completely decided yet, but for sure I'm going to be stealing some of the moss from this cherry barb or albino cherry barb tank. This is my Buddha aquarium. Everything needs hacking back. I'm letting it grow so I can steal a load of the plants for another setup and then it's all been hacked right back. But look at that moss. How lush is all of that? So you can see where I've cut it before, like there, and then there's lots of like a good inch of wispiness on top. Well, that looks kind of natural, so I'm gonna sort of keep that in the new scape. <laughs> that is pretty insane, right? That's a lot of moss there. So I've tried to keep it its shape, if you like, and on the underside is where I would attach it to that rock, but even that's probably gonna be too much. I think I'm gonna attach it and then trim it off after in the water and then clean it all out, which sounds silly, but I think it's the only way we can get it to look good on the, on the wood. Okay, that looks kind of shaggy, but kind of beautiful as well. Do you know what I mean? It's like raw, it's basic, it's it's nature. I don't know what I'm saying. It's, it just looks, it looks cool, but I think if we fill it up, it's all gonna stand up and end and look really scraggly. So the point of doing that was, so now I can trim it so that it's you know, tight to the wood, we can see more of the wood, that kind of thing. So let's do that now, fill it up with water quickly and give it good old trim. Okay, a couple of things. Number one, I am not trimming it. I think it looks awesome. It's very rough and raw, but really cool. I just think it needs like a central focal point. So like baby java fern, nano leaf, or trident, something like that there. Also, I stirred up all this uh, substrate, obviously, and it, it looks really good. I think I like that better than having it square, just having it all sort of waved and natural looking. 
yeah, I really like this. I think this is cool. This is one of those easy ones that everyone can do. One piece of wood, a bit of moss on top. Obviously, you probably, if you're a beginner, won't have as much moss as that. But if you buy the little cups or something of some moss, do two blobs on some glue, and it will grow like this within no time, providing you've got, like, you know, half decent light. I mean, moss grows with basically no light, so <laughs> you should be absolutely fine. In fact, this, this light is overkill. I'll probably have to dim it a little to stop um, algae, but then I might not because I've got a lot of shrimp going in as well. So, yeah, let's get some jar fern in this section here so we just got like a, a higher focal point so this one here is one of my plant storage tanks and this is the java fern that i think would work really really well so i've just got like anubias this is one i keep for epiphyte plants you know plants that don't need to be planted this isn't the same substrate by the way this is actually a type of aqua soil from ada called africana i think it is so it is still an active substrate it's just less than their usual whereas the crushed lava rock we've got in the uh, in the new shrimp tank is inert so that's why it's different it's just similar color <laughs> what am i talking about anyway this java fern perfect let's use it oh yes that's nice i mean we're covered in bubbles but let's go for our last final piece which is a small bit of red detail i want to just put it down here i'm going to use ludwigia palustra super red because you can actually grow it not even in a substrate all right it will be better in a proper nutrient rich substrate but it will still work in this especially with the decent light we've got on here at the moment There we go, that looks sweet. I mean, you can't see the wood anymore, but <laughs> never mind. It was always gonna happen, wasn't it? Right, next up, let's get a filter fitted. I'm gonna put it over this side. A really small hang on the back that works really well in some of my other tanks, so I just bought it again, and I found out a way of improving it. So the filter comes with this little, I'll leave a link for all of this by the way guys if you're interested in getting one, this little slide in and out thing which is pretty much useless but you know it keeps their base cost down and that's cool because it costs next to nothing. But we can put some sponges in there to make it work better. So the last time I showed this, a few people were confused. They're saying that the black should be this side, the inlet. That's not the inlet. The inlet is here. It flows through. It goes through the coarse first, then the medium, then it's polished before it comes out into the tank. So that's the way you do it. And that's looking really smart. Oh, yeah. Need to put the lid on as well. There we go. Tidy little thing, isn't it? It's a really cute little filter, I think. It just looks nice in the tank. It doesn't take anything away from the scape at all as well. Right, what we need to do now is add a dechlorinator to the water. Also, I'm gonna add beneficial bacteria and I'm gonna squeeze in one of the sponges from an already established tank, which will just seed the whole thing. Like with the beneficial bacteria, squeezing in a dirty sponge, I mean, we're away for Neocaridina shrimp, they can go straight in. If you don't have that option, you'll need to cycle the tank and you need to look up online how to do that. <laughs> Try not to spill all your dechlorinator like I did. Right, once that's all sort of cycled through, we'll give it 10, 15 minutes or so, and the whole water should have been sort of turned over by then. It's actually quite a fast little flow rate for such a tiny little filter, and it should work in no time getting bubbles off as well. Um, and then we can add in the beneficial bacteria. If we put it in now, the chlorine in the water could, you know, kill the bacteria. Um, so we'll just wait a little bit and then add that as well.
Okay, so I know that seems really counterintuitive, but that will be sort of cleared in absolutely no time, especially with the new, uh, you know, filter flosses and what they call filter foam. That's the one, yeah. So that will just clear this in no time at all, to be honest. That's it, we're all clear, we're looking awesome. But I tell you what, there's one more plant I wanna add. Just in this little section here, it's called Hygrophila pinnatifida. I think you guys will agree when it goes in there, it'll add a slightly different texture and look to that little section. Hang on, let me put it in. Okay, so yeah, just subtle at the moment, but you can see there that it's quite small, but it'll grow a lot bigger, like quite quickly. And given that it's close to the light, it'll actually give it a little sort of pinky hue as well. So that looks really good and complement the front section, I think anyway. Right, we're time for shrimp, let's do this. So this water here is gonna be vastly different from the tank they've had established for a long, long time. So I think it's best to do some drip acclimation. Now inside you can see here, I've got a mix of cherries, blues, blacks. I've got the lot, but you know, I, if you're like properly into breeding shrimp, then you shouldn't mix the colors, should you? But I don't actually care what color they are. I just think they're great. And whatever they come out as, they come out as. If some of them are brown, I'm not bothered. If some of them are bright red, some of them are bright blue. They're all good to me. I just want hundreds of them, thousands of them, in fact. <laughs> 